Hey there, Sam. In the previous lesson, we talked about how our models are related to each other and showed the relationship in an entity relationship diagram, ERD for short. We've got the relationship clearly defined in an ERD, but we haven't really talked about how do we define them in Laravel. In other words, how do we define the one-to-many and many-to-many -many relationship between our models in Laravel? Let's start with the one-to-many relationship between post and comments. When we define a relationship, it is important to identify which model is the parent and which one is the child. In this context, a post has many comments, and typically the model on the many side is the child, and the child usually has the foreign key. So in our case here, comments will be the child and post will be the parent. So let's go to our post model file. So to define the relationship between post and comment, we'll simply create a new method in post and name it comments. We'll make it plural because comments is on the many side. And in this method body, we'll call the has many method. And the first argument is the related model, which in our case here is comment. And the second argument is the foreign key in the comment table, which will be post ID. The third argument is the local key, which is the referencing field in the post model for the relationship. In most cases, including ours, it's just the primary ID field in our model. So we can just leave it out. The has many method will return a relation object, which represents the relationship between two models. The relation object is used by Laravel internally to perform database query so we can retrieve database record easily. Now take a moment to look at this code. The this keyword simply represents the post model. It's saying that the post model has many comments. It reads a lot like English, right? Okay, let's test our relationship now. Let's open a terminal and go to PHP Addison Tinker. We will load post with ID number one using the find method on our post model. So this code here will grab us an instance of the post model with ID one. And to retrieve all the comments that's related to this post, all we need to do is to read a magic property that has the same name as our relationship method, which in our case here, it just simply comments. And now if we hit enter, we get a collection of comments that's related to this post. Isn't that neat? And if you're wondering what is this voodoo magic and how does it work, I will show it to you now. The magic trick lies inside the base model class. So if we go inside the base model class and look for the get magic method, we can see that Laravel is overriding the default behavior of the get magic method. If you're not familiar with the get magic method in PHP, it is just a way for us to customize the logic when we're trying to retrieve a property from a class instance. So here we can see that Laravel has defined a custom method called get attribute. Let's take a look inside. On the first glance, it looks pretty scary. But if we take our time and look at the documentation provided here, it is actually not too bad. So basically what this method is doing, it is trying to check whether the key that we're trying to read from this class is an actual attribute inside the model, or if it has a get mutator. We'll talk more about mutator in the second half of this video. So let's leave it for now. If none of this exists, then Laravel will call this getRelationValue method to run a SQL query that retrieves our data records. And that's it. That's the voodoo magic behind the scene. It is Laravel overriding the getMagic method and return us a collection of comments when we try to read the comments magic property. By the way, if you're not familiar with collections, it is basically an enhanced version of Array. Think of it as Array on superpowers that has a lot of helper methods to simplify our life. Okay, now we're done with post. Let's define the inverse on the comments model. Let's go to comment. This time we'll create a new method called post. Notice we're using a singular noun here because post is on the one side in the one-to-many relationship. In the function body, we'll call the belongs to method, which is the opposite of has many. And the first argument, again, is the related model, which in our case here is post. The second argument is the foreign key, which is post ID. And now let's go back to Tinker and test our code here. I'll restart Tinker to load the latest changes in our code. As we can see from the previous output, comments with ID 1, 2, and 3 are our children of post number 1. So now if we try to find comment number 1 and load the post property, we are seeing post number 1. And that's how we can get the parent of a model. In our case here, we got an instance of the comment model and we're simply reading the post property to fetch the post relation. And that's how we define one-to-many relationship in Laravel. Okay, let's move on. Back in our database diagram, we still have yet to address the relationship between users and post and also users and comments. Between users and comments, it is a one-to-many relationship, and it is pretty similar to what we have done between posts and comments. I'll leave that as an exercise to you. But between users and posts, 
we have a many-to-many -many relationship. This is slightly more complicated than one-to-many. Let's see how we can implement this. Let's start with the post model. So inside the post model, we need to link it to users. As always, we'll define a new method called users. It should be a plural because the post can be written by a lot of users. Inside the method body, this time we'll call the belongs to many method. The first argument will be the related model, which is our user model. The second argument is our pivot table name, which is post user. The third argument is the foreign key in the pivot table for post. And the fourth argument is the related pivot key, which is user ID. And that's it. Let's go to our user table and we'll do the same. In a many to many relationship, we call the belongs to many method on both sides. All right, now that's all done. Let's test our code. Currently, our post user pivot table is all empty because we haven't seeded any data into it. Now that we have defined the relationship, we can start populating the pivot table with some relations. And Laravel makes it very easy for us to correct pivot brackets. Let's go back to Tinker. What we're going to do here is to assign user ID 1 to post ID 1. So in the console, I'll call the find method on our user model and pass in ID 1. Once I got the user, I can easily assign a post to it by simply calling the relation method, which in our case here will be post, and call the attach method on the relation object returned by the post methods. The attach method accepts an ID or an array of ID that we want to assign to the user. I'll assign post1 to user1 for now. So if we go back to workbench and rerun our query, we now see a new record in our post user table that says user1 has post ID1. And now if we go back to Tinker, and let's say user1 is also involved in post2 and 3. We can attach post2 and 3 in one go using an array. Whoops, I entered 1 and 2 instead of 2 and 3. Let's try that again. And now let's go back to workbench, rerun a query, and there are three records now. So user1 is now related to post1, 2, and 3. So far, so good. But what if we want to delete an entry from the pivot table? To do that, we can call the detach method on the relation object. So let's say user1 wants to withdraw from post1. We'll go back to our terminal and call the detach method on the relation and pass in post id1 as the argument. And now if we go back and rerun our query, post id1 is no longer associated to user1. Laravel also provides a method called toggle to attach or detach a relationship depending if it has already existed or not. For example, right now, user1 does not have post1. If we go back to Tinker, and call the toggle method, pass in post ID 1, and go back to workbench, rerun the query. We now see post 1 has been toggled on. If we go back to Tinker and rerun the toggle method, and now post 1 is toggled off. So the record disappeared in the post user pivot table. Laravel also provides a convenient method called sync that detach all the current relations and reattach what the user passed into the function. I'll show you what I mean. So right now, user 1 is associated to post 2 and 3. And back inside Tinker, suppose I want a user to forget about everything else and only associate post 1 and 2 to it. To do that, I can call the sync method and pass in an array of post ID 1 and 2. And now if we go back to workbench and rerun our query, we now see user 1 has only got post 1 and 2. The sync method has detached post 3 from before and attach post 1. If you don't want to detach any relation while syncing, we can use a sync without detaching method and Laravel will not detach any record. So for example, I can call the sync without detaching method and pass in post ID 3, rerun a query, and here we still see post 1 and 2 in the pivot table. So far, so good. And now let's move on. Let's talk about mutator. Mutators are essentially functions that allow us to transform our model attributes. There are two types of mutator. One is called assessor, which is used to read and transform values. And the other one is also known as mutator, which is used to transform values before we store them inside the database. If you're confused after listening to all this, don't worry. Let's go through this step by step with examples. We'll talk about assessor first. Now in our post model, we know that we have a title attribute. Now let's say for some reason, we want to grab the title in all uppercase. There are a few ways to achieve this. And one way is to create a new table column and store the uppercase version of the title in this new column. Although it works, this method is going to consume a lot of database storage space. 
This is because we already got the data, in our case here is the post title, and we're simply storing the transformation of the source data. For a simple transformation, like transforming text data to uppercase, this method is very inefficient. So do not do this at home. So a better way to achieve this is to create accessor functions. Let's create an accessor that transforms the post title into uppercase. An accessor is just a model method with special naming convention. The method name always starts with a get and ends with an attribute. So in our case here, for our uppercase title accessor, I'll call it get title uppercase attribute. In the function body, it's where we put in the transformation logic, which will simply transform the title attribute into uppercase by calling the PHP string function string to upper. And that's it. That's our assessor for uppercase title. If we name any modal function in this way, starting with a get and ends with attribute, Laravel will take the function as an assessor. And now to use the assessor, we can simply treat the name that we put in between get and attribute as one of the model's attribute. In our case here, it will be title upper case. I'll show you what I mean. Let's go back to Tinker. Grab a model and read title uppercase in snake case. Hit enter and we get our title in uppercase. And that is it. Assessor is very useful to transform our raw model attribute into something more useful. Okay, let's talk about mutator now. Mutator is a function that's triggered just before when an attribute is set. Let's define a mutator for the title attribute. And just like assessor, mutators also have a strict naming convention. It starts with the word set and ends with attribute again. In our case here, yeah, I'll define a mutator for title. So I'll call it set title attribute. The mutator will set an argument, which is the value that the user provided as the title of the post. So in this example, we'll convert the user provider value into lowercase before we set it to the attribute of this model. Let's test our code. We'll go back to Tinker, grab post number one again, and set the title to Heya, all in capital case. This step should trigger our mutator. Heya will be passed as the value argument in our mutator, and our mutator will convert Heya into lowercase. So if we done pose again, the title attribute is in lowercase, and that means our mutator is working. Great. I think it is a good place to stop here. There are a lot more about models to go through, but the most essential one that you need to know are the mutators, accessors, how to define a relationship, and casting, which is a class property that casts an attribute to a data type. If you want to learn more about the other casting types, the link is in the description. When working with a model, you'll spend most of your time playing around with these features. So make sure you digest them well before you move on. Key takeaway for this lesson, we use the has many and belongs to method to define one to many relationship. Belongs to many is used to define many to many relationship. We use the attach, detach, toggle, and sync to associate many to many relations. Assessors and mutators transform values when we retrieve or set model attributes. That's it for this lesson, and I'll see you again in the next video. If you enjoyed the content of this video, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, and the bell icon for more content to come. It will really help me out. Thanks for the support.